calendars changed at the time of Hezekiah. Maybe you didn't know that. And that was in the 8th century. Uh, and his reign was 715 to 687 B.C. That's before Messiah. The moon's original cycle, Jehovah's original calendar, always had 30 days in each month. So how did the moon cycle change? And here's a little part about During the time of Noah, one prime example of this is located in Genesis 7:11. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, on, the, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep were broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. Genesis 8, 3 through 4 says, And the waters receded continually from the earth. At the end of the hundred and fifty days, the waters de decreased. Then the ark rested. In the seventh month, on the fourteenth day of the month, on the mountains of Ararat, here it states in verse 711 that the rain began to fall in the second month and the 17th day. Now as we read in verse uh, 8, 3, the ark came to rest, came back to rest on Mount Ararat in the seventh month on the 17th day. So we could count that as we see here on the right panel from the, uh, from the second month, 17th day to the third month. 17th day is one month. In fact, I'll, I'll just skip through these lists here, but we can see that it's we're counting up months, one through five. Also, we read in Genesis 8, 3, this same period of time was also called 150 days. Now, we take 150 days and divide them by that five months that we counted up, and we get 30. This tells us that there were 30 days every month in the days of Noah. Another example of 30-day months in Scripture is the story of Jonathan and David. And this story talks about a two-day new moon feast. In 1 Samuel 20, verses 1 through 42, David and Jonathan knew when the month was to begin. The priest declared the new moon in those days, and all of the months had 30 days. David knew that, quote, tomorrow was new moon and that he should be sitting at dinner with King Saul, his father-in-law, for the beginning of the new moon feast. Jonathan and David both knew that Saul would miss David at dinner time, the first day of the new moon celebration. As David and Jonathan had planned, David would hide himself in the field. That evening, David's place was empty at, the dinner, at dinner time. Saul thought David was physically or ceremonial unclean for the first day of the new moon feast. Therefore, Saul did not ask about David until the second day at dinner. Every person was to wash themselves and their clothing if they became unclean. They were commanded to be ceremonially clean before the new moon, Sabbath, or feast, that from Leviticus 15, 16. Saul did not ask Jonathan about David until dinner time on the second day of the new moon festival. Saul suspected David, uh, expected David to at least be at dinner the second day of the new moon celebration. So, other examples of 30-day months in pro is in prophecy. And there are many other examples in Scripture where you can find the months all contain 30 days. Prophetic times of days and years were given in 30-day month periods. Examples are found in Daniel 12 and Revelation 11 and 12. In Daniel, it says he prophesies of 1,260 days also being three and a half years. The other prophecy, 1260, well, this is the prophecy, this is the math, 1260 divided by 3.5 equals a 360 day year. And 360 divided by 12 months equals 30 days each month. 
So how did the moon cycle change? What kind of change occurred? And before the time of Hezekiah's life and all the way back to the creation of Adam, there were always 30 days in every month. And Hezekiah reigned over Judah in 715 to 687 B.C. So Hezekiah signed, a sign that he would be healed and would come to the temple on the third day. And this is all found in 2 Kings 20. Hezekiah's sickness and the sign. One of the most striking instances recorded in Holy Scripture of the, of the interruption, or rather reversal, of the working of a natural law is the going back of the shadow on the dial of Ahaz, the time of Hezekiah's recovery from his illness. The record of the incident is as follows. Isaiah was sent to Hezekiah in his sickness to say, quote, Thus saith Yahweh, the Elohim, of David thy father, I have heard thy prayers, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of Yahweh. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be the sign that Yahweh will heal me, and that I shall go up to the house of Yahweh the third day? And Isaiah said, This shall be the sign unto thee from Yahweh, that Yahweh will do the thing that thou hast spoken. Shall the shadow go forward ten steps or go back ten steps? And Hezekiah answered, It is a light thing for the shadow to decline ten steps. Nay, but let the shadow go backwards ten steps. And Isaiah the prophet cried to Yahweh, and he brought, and he brought the shadow ten steps backward by which it had gone down the dial of Ahaz. In 2 Kings 20, 5 through 11, and in Isaiah 38, 8, it says, Behold, I will cause the shadow on the steps which is gone down on the dial of Ahaz with the sun to return backwards ten steps. So the sun returned ten steps on the dial whereon it was gone down. And that taken from BibleStudyTools.com. And I'll, yes, and thank you, brother. Uh, I'll leave all these links below so you can go look them up for yourself. So if the sun and moon are Jehovah's calendar, and they are, what would happen if the sun moved from its original place, such as in Second Kings 20, 9 through 10? It says, quote, shadow returned backward 10 degrees, unquote. First, we must understand, for the sun style shadow to return backwards 10 degrees, the sun would have to return backwards from its current location at that time of the day to where it was 10 degrees earlier. <clears throat> and there's a picture of it over here. Uh, we have uh, the 12 o'clock sun here at noon. And the state of the sun, for example, at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And it shows from steps one all the way to the bottom with full sun, no shadow. And uh, for simplicity, we'll say that the sun moves from right to left. And at 12 o'clock, the stairway of Ahaz is fully exposed. At that moment, there's no shadow. Okay, then if the sun goes backward in the morning, Jehovah brings the sun into, for example, state two, so that stairs one up to ten would be under a shadow. Ten degrees. Note that Yahweh dictated exactly how many degrees of change, which was ten forward or backwards. He did not leave that up to Hezekiah. How come back, now come back to how much time was this 10 degrees? As we know, people still use sundials even today, although mostly just for recreational and, quote, scientific purposes. It is known fact that for most of the Earth, 15 degrees on a sundial is equal to one hour. So if Hezekiah's sundial returned backwards 10 degrees, 
that would mean the shadow moved backwards two-thirds of an hour, as 10 is two-thirds of 15. If 15 degrees is equal to one hour, 60 minutes, that would mean 10 degrees is also two-thirds of an hour, which is 40 minutes. And we can find the math over on the right panel here. How much time is 10 degrees? Oh, that is 40 minutes, and we'll leave the math there for people to study. The moon never changes course. Okay, since we know now that 10 degrees equals 40 minutes, that means Hezekiah's sundial shadow returned backwards 40 minutes. I know what you're thinking. Okay, so they had an extra 40 minutes that day. So what? Well, we must remember that Jehovah's calendar is both the sun and the moon. It makes no mention of the moon here. Here it only speaks of the sun's position changing 10 degrees, which we now know was 40 minutes. The moon never changes course. It just continued on its daily orbit as it always had. It can, be easily, uh, it can easily be seen here that this would have altered the relationship of time between the sun and moon orbit by 40 minutes. However, although it has only changed once, each and every day since that time, the 40-minute alteration is still evident. In other words, the next day after this happened, the sun and moon orbit relationship were still altered by 40 minutes. The day after that, there is still an alteration of 40 minutes. Months and years after that, yep, still the 40-minute difference from the original orbit. The 40-minute alteration between the relationship of the sun and the moon has continued from that day until the present time. And our view of their delicate relationship is what it looks like after this change occurred. So what we must understand is this was a one-time event which instituted a change that is evident and viewable from Earth every day since then. We must think about how the sun and moon have a delicate relationship between one another on their daily orbit cycles. If a change is made to the sun, it will affect the phases of the moon, as the moon phases are dependent upon its position in relation to the sun. The moon's phases change from a completely dark moon at the beginning of the month and phase all the way through the last waning sliver at the end of the month. If a change is made to the sun, then this will also make a change on the monthly cycle of the moon. And here's where it starts on New Moon Day when it's dark. And then the moon waxes to the first quarter, full moon, all the way to the last quarter. That's how it works. Why did Yahweh choose how many degrees and not Hezekiah? <clears throat> and that, of course, from Second Kings 29. Shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees or back 10 degrees? Here we see that Yahweh gave Hezekiah the choice of 10 degrees forward or backwards. But why did Yahweh choose how many degrees and not let Hezekiah? Because no man or Satan can change Yahweh's set-apart times, which are dictated by his calendar. Hezekiah might have chosen 30 or 40. What would that have done to the calendar? If a, change, if a change was made which caused more than one day's loss in any month, we would lose the last Sabbath of that month, as the last Sabbath is the 29th day of the month. As it stands now, only the 30th day, which is a preparation day for new moon, is lost in some months. If we had lost two days instead of one, then we would lose both the 30th day and the 29th day Sabbath, therefore destroying the seven-day weekly cycle, which Yahweh instituted in Genesis 1. Note that new moon begins and is the anchor for the month and is not included in the six-day work week, nor is new moon a Sabbath, which must follow the six-day 
six-day work week. For more info on this subject, go to our website. What is the result of Hezekiah's 40-minute or 10-degree change made between the relationship of the sun and the moon? Well, let's calculate. The 10-degree sign of Hezekiah caused a 40-minute time difference between the position of the sun in relation to the moon. This 40-minute difference is true every day since that time. 40 minutes per day times 30 days equals 1,200 minutes difference per month. 1,200 minutes per month times 12 months equals 144 or 14,400 minutes differences per year. 14,400 times three years equals 43,200 minutes difference in three years. So how many hours are we talking about? 43,200 minutes divided by 60 equals 720 hours lost in three years' time. So how many days is this? 720 hours divided by 24 hours in a day equals 30 days, a.k.a. the 13th month that occurs every three years. 30 days would be a, an extra month every three years that would be all summed up by all the change. History is a good witness to what we've already seen in scriptures about the 30-day month. Now we'll go and read some quotes from history. Calendars in antiquity were usually lunar solar, depending on the introduction of the intercal intercalary months to align the solar and lunar years. Around 700 BC, all the calendars of the world changed. It is known by many historians and is well documented in many historical texts that in the 8th century BC, there was a major change in all the calendars, not just in Israel. Worldwide, there was a change in the days of the month. This change affected many different and unrelated cultures worldwide, including, but not limited to, Chinese, Aztec, Greece, Babylonians, Egyptians, early Romans, and many others. Before this change, all of these different widely scattered cultures are recorded as using a 30-day, 30-day, uh, 12-month per year, 30 days per month calendar. Then suddenly, in the 8th century, these cultures, who all had too many days in their year, they suddenly had five days extra per year. All of these cultures made up myths and stories about how the gods battled and the moon lost and the sun won the battle. And so the sun gained an extra five days and so on. They all discarded their old 360-day 60 day calendars as they followed the solar year. So I'll go ahead and read this quote, brother, and I'll leave these links below. This is a quote. It's going to be two pages of this quote, I, quote, I believe. Certainly. In the 8th century BCE, civilizations all over the world either discarded or modified their 360-day calendars. The 360-day calendars had been in use for the greater part of a millennium. In many places, month, month, Links immediately after that change were not affixed, were, were not fixed, but were based instead upon the observation of the sky. During the period, or the second bullet here, during the period which month, month links were not fixed, new moons were usually sighted after either 29 or 30 days. If clouds obscured the vision on the, 13th, on the 30th day, a new moon was declared to have begun. Next, when month links were identical with lunations, only those that lasted 30 days were considered to be normal. 
This was probably because all months had previously been 30 days for such a long period of time. Next, during this period in Greece, for example, months that consisted of 30 days were considered to be full. Those that lasted only 29 were said to be hollow. Months containing 30 days were also called full in Babylon, but those containing 29 days deemed it to be defective. And you can check that at the link below. Oh, I guess this is another quote. I'll read this one. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> From Egypt, the Canopus decree states specifically that the calendar had 360 days per year in the ancient past. The Eber Papyrus Papyrus from the 18th dynasty gives the same calculations for the year. The additional five days, epigenomal, <laughs> I should know that, epigenomal days, or their intercalary days, were added after 700 BC and due to the conditions surrounding these days were considered bad luck with a decree that no work was allowed on these days. Okay, so that was Egypt. Now we have the Mayans. The Mayans added five days to a 360-day year per calendar and added five days to uh, that year in 700 B.C., and which was also considered uh, bad luck days. The Peruvians also had a 360-day year calendar in ancient times. And finally, even China had a calendar of 360 days in ancient times. The indication is overwhelmingly in that ancient calendars consisted of a year of 360 days evenly. All of them had months of exactly 30 days, which aligned with the moon at that time. It would appear that the difference between ancient calendars had nothing to do with the number of days in the month or year, but mainly with the names associated to the months and the years. All of the ancient societies started their year in the spring, with the new moon closest to the spring equinox. From biblical sources, Exodus 12 states that Nisan is the first month, Abib, which falls in the spring of the year. This was still true in the time of Esther. You can see the book of Esther, who namely indicates that Adar was the twelfth month or last month of the year. And here's the quote for that from this historical analysis, world calendars. And this is the same article, but I'm going to take a break and let Brother read it. Certainly. After the calamitous events around 750 to 700 B.C., Calendars around the world were adopted and not in the same manner. Egypt added five epiglomenial days to the new uh, empirical type calendar. The Hebrews had to modify their calendar to represent the metonic lunar cal solar calendar that would track dates by both lunar and solar cycles. Their festival year required a precise accounting of the lunal relation related months. The, Ro the Romans abandoned the lunar cycle and went with the solar cycle due to the agricultural growing season. And again, the link is below for you to check that. Okay, the moon cycle today is 29.5 days. Today we know that the moon has a monthly cycle of only 29.5 days. This is from one dark moon, new moon, to the next. We know these times by reading Jehovah's two witnesses, the sun and the moon, and they speak to us the length of the months and the weeks and the days and the years. As is quoted here in these pictures, Genesis 1.14 and Genesis 1.16. And Jehovah said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and years. 
And he also said uh, he made two great lights, a greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to govern the night. And he made the stars also. Of course, anyone knows that we are not to observe a half day, even though the moon has a 29 and a half day cycle in the present time. As the sun controls when the day begins and ends, the moon announces when the new month begins and when the last month is ended. We do not choose the length of the month. Every month will contain either 29 or 30 days. It will never go over 30 days. Today we have 354 days each year in a lunar calendar. Approximately every three years we have to add 30 day month, making 384 days in a year because of the change that Jehovah made in Hezekiah's day. And we call that a 13th month. Uh, and here's another quote. Uh, the length of the lunar cycle, the lunar cycle from new moon to new moon takes 29.5 days to complete. This roughly corresponds to one month. However, if we based our calendar on the lunar cycle, we would soon get ahead of an Earth year. Why? Because a year of lunar cycles adds up to only 354 days, not 365.25 leaving a balance of 11.25 days each year. So there is a difference of 11 days each year between the solar and the lunar year. Well, how do we calculate if the month will be 29 or 30 days? Well, the Naval Observatory's new moon calculations can be very good help in making a projected calendar. And I use uh, the Naval Observatory uh, also to know when conjunction days are. And uh, anyways, with the new moon, Sabbath, and feast days calculated on a projected calendar, people will know several months or even a year ahead of time when to set their vacation time for the feast. And uh, we have already done a calendar for this year if you want to go look for that on the events page on our website. And here, uh, over here on the right, you see the, the lunar phases. They don't always line up. Sometimes there's one there and one there. And that's just because we've had that change in the lunar cycles that they used to always line up to announce the Sabbath. <clears throat> so uh, would you like to learn how to read the moon? Uh, today we have a 29 and 30 day month and there is a way to know when the month begins without the Naval Observatory calculation. If you know how to read the moon on the 28th day or the 29th day, the last Sabbath of the month, you can understand how to keep Jehovah's Sabbath. And you will have to get up to this. The 29th day month. <laughs> to know how to read the moon to begin the new month, a person needs to go out early before daybreak. Look to the east for the last crescent of the month, which will appear on the 28th or 29th day of the month that is ending. When the crescent is spotted on the morning of the 28th, but it's not seen, excuse me, but it is not seen it on the 29th, the new moon day will be at dawn after the last Sabbath of the month, that is the 29th. And here we see that on the lunar calendar there, creator's calendar. And this is the 30-day month, so uh, we'll read that now. That's a little bit different. <clears throat> If the crescent is seen in the east on the morning of the last Sabbath of the month, the 29th day, we know that this, has been, this will be a 30-day month. We know this simply because the moon doesn't have enough time to go through the last crescent that is large enough to be seen on the morning of the 29th and go through the conjunction to the first crescent before sunset. In this way, a person can calculate the new moon day each month, one day before the new moon begins. 
Holder does not tell us to keep his calendar without a witness of how the days, weeks, months, and years are constructed. Plus, he must tell us how his calendar is to be read and kept. His calendar, including the 29-day month, 30-day month, and the 13th month are all in his word. By studying scripture, we can understand fully how to keep his appointed times, which are only kept by his calendar and not man's. Questions and answers. We all know this, who, what, where, and when, and how. These are some of the questions, and this is about Hezekiah's son. Why do months have 29 or 30 days? Who changed it? Yehovah. What happened? Month changed from 30 days to 29.5 days, and the sun gained five extra days. When? About 700 B.C., and this is the time of King Hezekiah's reign. He reigned from 715 to 687 B.C. Where? The whole world. This was worldwide. How? The sun went backward 10 degrees. <clears throat> Noah's sign. Yahweh set a rainbow as a visual sign of his promise to Noah and to every generation who has lived since that time. Even to this generation in the present day, we still see the sign of Yahweh's promise, his rainbow in the clouds. Hezekiah's sign, just like the sign given to Noah that Yahweh would never destroy the earth by water again, the sign given to Hezekiah works the same way. It was a sign to him that he would be healed and would come to the temple on the third day. The 29th month and the 13th month, approximately every three years, are also assigned to every generation since that day, especially to this generation. The sign is a promise to this generation that they would be healed and made whole on the third day from that time, which is the beginning of the seventh day millennium when Yeshua, when Yeshua returns just like Hezekiah on the third day. We will go to the temple and worship Yahweh. These signs are about Jehovah's promises, and they were set in place as a remembrance to future generations. Jehovah has not changed. His Torah is still in force, and so are his promises, his signs, that he has given to his people for these last days. As we begin to gather up and return to the ancient paths and commands of Jehovah, we are preparing for the soon coming return of Yeshua, the King of Glory. And so to access more information on this topic, just please go to our website, LunarSabbathDay.com. Thank you so much for being here today, and thank you, Brother Pete, for co-hosting and reading, and I hope we will see you all back next week.